We're live. Welcome back to Jewels of the Trade. Today we're going to be talking about black jades, both jadeite jade and nephrite jade. I've had a lot of requests in the comments from people wanting to learn about black jade, and it's also been a hot topic in our Discord server lately, which I encourage you to join via the link in the video description. We'll be discussing black jade translucency and origins, gray jade, and unique black jades such as galactic jade and Victorville jade. There's some really exciting things to be said about black jade. Often black jade, either jadeite or nephrite, is actually a very, very, very dark green. This here, this Ogden piece, is actually an example of dark green nephrite jade that we wouldn't call black jade. But this cabochon here is an example of true black jadeite jade. And as you can see, this is a video of Jeff Mason, owner of Mason K, shining a pen light through the stone. It has this beautiful green glow around it. This is also jadeite jade. This is a stone that my husband cut and he's actually holding it in this video. And again, we have like a really dark green jadeite jade, but it's not a true black. It's not truly, truly black the same way that this likely Burmese piece is, where if if you're looking at the surface, especially like in bright light, where it actually truly looks black until you shine the pen light through it. First, I want to explain why a customer might choose black jade for their jewelry over another black gemstone. Onyx is a really popular choice for black gemstones and we're seeing so many more men wear jewelry now and I think a lot of men are kind of leaning towards those black and gray colors especially. So onyx is actually a variety of agate which is a chalcedony which is a variety of quartz and I, I think I said that right. It's close to jadeite jade and hardness but it's actually not as tough as the two jades. Um, another really fabulous like black stone alternative that I want to talk about is called hematite. This is also one of my favorite stones. If you were to slice hematite super, super thin and shine a light through it, you'd actually see that it's super, super dark red. So the word hematite, hema means blood. So it's not bloodstone, but like the word originally meant bloodstone. So that's kind of where the hema and hematite comes from. And that's because of that dark red color. Hematite is considered to be tougher than both jades. And I, to be honest, that's something that I hear a lot, but I, I don't know, I haven't seen the exact research on it, so I don't know exactly like how different in toughness it is, but it's not as, it's not quite as hard as jadeite jade. Hematite has a really distinct luster and you can see side by side with this piece of Guatemalan black jadeite jade that the hematite is like highly metallic and very, very reflective. So typically you're not going to confuse hematite with other black gemstones. So this is Shungite, which to be honest, you guys, I just didn't have a ton of black gemstones on hand. And I don't know that you're going to run into Shungite like a ton, especially in a jewelry store, but it's something that I had. And I thought it was a really great demonstration of the difference in sort of like luster and finish between Shungite and black jadeite jade. You can really kind of tell, like if you had these side by side, you'd be able to tell which one is jade because the jade is so much glassier. And you can see if you look at the reflection, so you can see there's a reflection of me behind the camera and the reflection of the lights. And the more blurred that reflection is, right, the less glassy of a luster. So this is just a really, really good demonstration. Shungite is not really stable enough for jewelry, but it gained a lot of popularity because it's believed to protect people from EMF radiation. And, and I'm not endorsing that. I'm not saying that it does that, but I, I am saying that is why a lot of people buy it. Um, and it simply does not look like black jade as far as luster is concerned. So this is an example of black actinolite next to black nephrite. And this is actually like a pretty complicated conversation. So nephrite jade is not a mineral, right? It's actually a rock that's comprised of minerals in the actinolite tremolite series. So for instance, single crystal actinolite is not nephrite. Nephrite is, it's a, it's a polycrystalline aggregate. So most jade carvers don't consider the black actinolite that's being sold on the market as black jade to be the same as black nephrite because 
it doesn't cut the same way. It doesn't have the same properties. Actinolite, tremolite, and hornblende are all amphiboles, and actinolite and tremolite form a series, and then actinolite and hornblende also form a series. But um, you have minerals in an aggregate that are intermediaries of actinolite and tremolite, and in the case of hornblende as well, uh, actinolite and hornblende. But those intermediaries of actinolite and tremolite are usually what are forming nephrite jade. The amount of tremolite and actinolite in a jade stone actually affects the color to some extent. So white nephrite jade, which I don't have an example of on hand, called mutton fat jade, is actually the highest quality of nephrite jade and it's considered to be pure tremolite. So if you start to have kind of a green color, then there might be some iron in it because it's really the iron in the actinolite that is giving nephrite, usually, usually it's green color. And of course there's exceptions to that, for instance, in cases like polar BC jade, where we know that chromium has a huge influence on color. So this is an example of jadeite jade next to nephrite jade. And the Guatemalan jadeite jade, I know for a fact comes from Guatemala. This Australian nephrite jade is believed to be from cowl mine because it looks a lot like cowl jade. And it's a little hard to tell here, but the nephrite jade on the right actually has more of an apparent green color. And I wanted to demonstrate that. So I, I have the blackest black paint in the world. I don't know if you guys have heard of that. And so I actually like painted a little section um, like on a piece of paper so that I could compare it side by side. But to be honest, in person, you can tell a lot more than you can tell in the video that the nephrite jade on the right has more of a green hue to it than the Guatemalan jadeite jade on the left. So because of that, my little like my black paint experiment didn't really work out very well. But as we take a light to it, you can actually see more of the green color. So like here on the surface, you can see more green on the nephrite jade on the right. And again, like, actually, I don't know if I mentioned this already, but um, Guatemalan black jadeite jade, Burmese black jadeite jade, black nephrite jade from Wyoming and Cowell and a whole bunch of different places can be like true black. They don't always have to have this much of a green tint. These are just the samples that I had on hand. So this isn't necessarily an identifier. It's more of just like a fun nerdy jade fact. So here on the left, you can see my Australian nephrite jade beads, which actually is what that's what I'm wearing today. I love them. I love them. You can see that glow when I shine a light through it, that they are truly dark, dark green. And the Guatemalan jade eye jade, it's it's probably really dark green too. I don't see how it could possibly not be, but like, man, you really can't see it. Like it's it's more of a true black. And the difference really is the translucency. So when you have a black jade, whether it's jade eye jade or nephrite jade, that doesn't have translucency, it's gonna look more true black when you shine a light through it. When it has more translucency, that's where you're gonna get that glow. And it's usually gonna be a green glow, but it could also potentially be a red glow. And so this is an example of black nephrite jade from Mason K, where you can see the green glow around the edge. And then this is that example, I'm gonna continue to show this, of this really fine, this is a really fine cabochon of that black jadeite jade that is likely Burmese in origin that has that really, really beautiful green glow. So moving on to the next example, this is another example of jadeite jade next to nephrite jade. <laughs> I'm looking at the comments, you guys, you're cracking me up. Russia sure does have a lot of gem resources. <laughs> that is correct. <laughs> Hematite is a messy rock to work with. That I did not know. That is very interesting. And I, I didn't know this either. Hematite turns the water red, but that makes sense because the powder would be red. So, wow, very, very interesting. You guys are always so full of information. If you guys have any questions or comments, please leave them in the chat. I love getting to talk to you guys. There's a type of black nephrite that is not green. So what Dake is talking about here is in the case of jades, and I, I believe this can be true of jade at jade too, where the color, the black color is actually from graphite inclusions. And basically there's just so many graphite inclusions that it colors it black. So that would be an exception to like the, the iron and the actinolite causing it to be black or in the case of 
jadeite jade where you have um like the iron or the chromium intense like intenseness making it really really dark and then making it like really really dark green i think i, I think i got a, i trailed off a little bit there i'm trying to read the chat <laughs> i do have blue and green awesome yeah so that's a thing too sometimes you can shine a light through jade and it'll even glow kind of blue which is pretty cool so this is a really great example of black jade next to just a really dark green jade where you can actually see that surface color so on the left we have the jadeite jade from guatemala and on the right, we have nephrite jade from Big Sur. And it's one of those things where like, if you just saw the Big Sur jade by itself, like this particular piece, you would probably think that it's black. But then when you hold it next to a black stone, it's definitely green. It's another good example. And I should, I should clarify, typically, because jadeite jade is harder, it's going to take a higher polish. Like the finish is going to be a little bit better. So as a rule... When it comes to black jades, jadeite jade side by side next to nephrite jade is going to look a little bit glassier. So you're going to get sharper lines in the reflections. This is an extreme version of that. Big Sur jade really doesn't take as high of a polish as a lot of other nephrite jades. And so this is just a really good way to kind of demonstrate on camera what I mean when I say that um, the finish is just it's it's higher. It's it's a higher polish on jadeite jade as opposed to nephrite jade. So I have another example here. I brought a lot of examples, you guys. <laughs> I actually started going through all of my black jade and I was pretty impressed with how much black jade I have. So Canada is a big producer of nephrite jade, or I say that they still are. They haven't been able to mine in the last few years, but um, hopefully they'll be able to mine again one day. And Canada does produce some, did produce some, black nephrite jade. So this is an example side by side of the black nephrite jade compared to the black jadeite jade. Although I should clarify, my husband actually cut the ring on the right, the Guatemalan jade, and he uh, didn't like put a final polish on it. So it's actually not as shiny as it would be if it had that final polish. So there you go. Uh, these do have a pretty good polish on them. So these are the Guatemalan Jade I Jade beads that I talked about last week that I bought from Yakshtun Minerals at the Tucson Gem Show. And they are like super, like I would call this a true black. So I painted that paper with the blackest black paint in the world. And as you can see, I gave up. I didn't put enough coats on it. But it does like, you can kind of tell side by side that there's not as much green coming off of the Guatemalan Jade I Jade beads. Oh! <gasps> This is such a good question. Supreme Ruler Wilcox asked, why is Mossitsit associated with jade if it isn't a jade? Oh, this is such an exciting topic. So Mossitsit is also an aggregate. It also comes from Burma, which is really exciting. There's not very much of it. It's very rare. It's very beautiful. So Mossitsit's chemical composition as an aggregate can be comprised of a variety of minerals. And two of the minerals that you will typically see in Mossitsit are jadeite and cosmochlor. Jadeite, omphacite, and cosmochlor, when they're the principal mineral in a polycrystalline aggregate, like all, like it has to be all pyroxene, like in a stone, right? That's when we consider it jade, like chemically, right? And it has to, I mean, the formation and stuff has to all, it has to be right. But in the case of Mossitsit, you have these other minerals, all bite and what have you. I actually don't know what all is in Mossitsit because it does vary from specimen to specimen as well. And as far as I know, they haven't found true Mossitsit anywhere else. They found something kind of similar somewhere else, but it's not really exactly the same. So they call it a different name. So Mossitsit usually does just refer or it should just refer to the gemstone from the Mossitsit locale in Burma. But it does have jadeite in it or, or it might have jadeite in it or it might have cosmochlor in it but it's not principally jadeite or cosmochlor, which is why we don't consider Mossitsit a jade. However, it's a really fantastic stone. So don't think that it's like bad or there's something wrong with it. It's just not jade. Really great question. Really great question. Dake, for the same carving, 
I don't know that nephrite's easier to carve. Would any carvers like to weigh in? I'm not sure. This is something that I don't know as well. My husband has done a little bit of jade carving and he he does not like to work with nephrite. He prefers jadeite jade. Jadeite jade typically has a really granular structure, whereas nephrite is more fibrous. And so you can almost imagine like on a microscopic level, like nephrite is formed in these little sheets that all stack on top of each other. And when you cut against it, the sheets kind of like fray out sort of and it can create problems because they can like chip off and uh from what i understand working with nephrite jade can be a little bit unpredictable when you have a smaller microstructure it's a higher quality jade for many reasons it's tougher it usually looks better but also it's better for carvers so carvers will typically choose uh, nephrite jades especially for like if they have a smaller microstructure but I would love to hear some opinions from the chat on nephrite versus jadeite from a carving perspective what do we have here so it is funny how there are differing opinions regarding like the Burmese and the Guatemalan colors of jadeite jade and I actually I, I was thinking about this earlier there is quite a bit of overlap. And I know that we will typically kind of offhand be like, oh, that's Guatemalan jade or that's Burmese jade as if we can really, really tell by looking. And in some cases that that's true, especially where you have that like gray, blue, green color that seems to be like just really like, I don't know, iconic for Guatemalan jade, but both can produce like good color and good translucency in other colors as well. And so, it can actually be a little bit hard for that reason to be absolutely certain of the origin of a jadeite jade stone. And from what I understand, most labs do not even, they don't put origin on the report for jadeite jade. Like for instance, I don't believe GIA puts origin on a jadeite jade report. So, it, but they're both beautiful. And I feel like each one kind of has its own following. Like you have people who prefer Guatemala and people who prefer Burmese. And it's just one of the amazing things about jade is there's really something for everybody. I think jadeite is easier to polish than nephrite. Okay, very interesting. This is the kind of opinion that I need because I'm not a carver. And so I, I don't know. <laughs> like I can't say for certain. This is a really interesting comment from Pawan that uh, Burmese jadeite jade might dwindle from the market. Uh, I think that that could be be possible. So uh, there are a few different factors that are contributing to uh, the limitations on the amount of high quality Burmese jadeite jade entering the market right now. And what we're seeing is that is sort of generating a greater demand for the higher translucency Guatemalan jadeite jade material, which I think is really, really exciting. But of course, in gemstones in general, like you never know when new deposits are going to be discovered or how much longer until deposits are depleted. And so something could always surprise you. And that's why I think a lot of a lot of people will say you should buy Burmese Jade Jade because it's going to run out and, and it's an investment and it'll go up in value. And I understand why people say that. I really do. Like I know exactly where you're coming from, but we don't know for sure. And so that's why I personally never encourage anybody to like invest in Jade because you just don't know. They could find another deposit somewhere and a lot of that could come out into the market and then it, it could affect the value, uh, not in the way that you think it will. So um, Nathan says that nephrite jade is splintery. <laughs> That's what I've heard, right? Because of the, the way that it's like fibers stack on top of each other. I'm so technical. Can't you guys tell? I'm really explain, explaining with this, explaining this with the most mineralogical terminology. Um, he says, yes, I'll ask him. Yeah, like, I think this is a great discussion. It's not something I can personally weigh in on. Yeah, a lot of people do say that about the Guatemalan jadeite jade. And I will say too, like, keep in mind that there is a huge spectrum of Burmese jadeite jade. It can vary a lot in color and quality. And I, I hate saying this, but like in the American market, we really get a small taste of what's out there in the world of jade and i think that that's changing i think that as demand for jade increases we're going to be able to have more here in circulation and in independent jewelry stores but um yeah i think that there are there are definitely aspects of guatemalan jade like especially when you get the blue with like the rind on it and it you kind of get that like two-tone yellow and blue i think people 
get really excited about stuff like that because it's unique and it looks so natural. So yeah, thank you, Shauna. Yeah, I think it's it's that's a tough topic because so many people want to believe that that Jade is an investment. And, and I'm not saying that it's not. I just don't want to say that it is <laughs> just in case just because you just never know. You never know what's going to happen. So this here is an example that I showed earlier of the translucency of those nephrite jade beads. And then I also, I, so this is a golden smoke piece. So these are kind of the same beads, but in a different piece. And you can really see the green on the surface in this example. So it's just another reiteration that black jade is dark 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 green jade so what else do i have i have so many guys i have so many pieces to show this is it against the black the blackest black paint and i hoped that this would show on camera how green the beads are but it doesn't so i'm really sorry about that this is one of my husband's new finds so we uh know someone who's a seller who um they had purchased this and they were going to sell it, but they accidentally dropped it and it fractured. You can see the fracture on screen pretty easily. And so we really admire this about the seller. They said, I don't want to sell this to my customer because it has a fracture. And we were like, oh my gosh, we totally understand. How about we buy it from you? So this is my husband Hunter's new find. It's a bangle that actually fits him. It's black nephrite jade. It is probably from Australia. And, uh, I like I don't want to I don't I don't want to get too excited about it but what we're probably going to do is have a jeweler like hand make like fabricate a gold um I don't know how you say like something that you would kind of wrap around the bangle like a like a piece that like a sleeve a sleeve that fits over the bangle to cover the fracture and so I'll let you guys know how that turns out because we're like really excited about it. Uh, but this bangle is a great example of that surface green color. And you can really kind of see into the texture of the jade. This would be something where like if you had black jade and you were wondering if it was nephrite jade or jadeite jade, this one is definitely nephrite jade. And you can tell because of that fibrous texture that I was talking about. It's really iconically nephrite. So it's I feel like this is a good example to show when distinguishing black nephrite jade from black jadeite jade. So something else that we should discuss is that in the realm of black jadeite jade, um, it can get pretty expensive. Like it can actually be a lot more than black nephrite jade. Part of that is because jadeite jade just in general is more rare. And so jadeite jade in general does tend to command higher prices because there are fewer mines. It's less abundant. So it's not as saturated in the marketplace. And that obviously drives up demand and value. Additionally, though, you do have that quality difference where a lot of times in, in good high quality black jadeite jade, you're going to get that sharper mirror in the finish. And so what a lot of customers prefer to buy if they don't want to spend on solid black jadeite jade is they'll choose gray jadeite jade. And I feel that the gray jadeite jade is just like the coolest. It's such a good option because you kind of get a smoky texture. It's very unisex. It can be masculine. It can be feminine. You have the cool translucency. So I feel like this really well demonstrates that the gray jadeite jade, you're not typically going to see green glow. And I believe the reason for that is in the case of gray jadeite jade, you have white jadeite jade crystals intermixing with um, black jadeite jade crystals that might actually be graphite. So in theory, if you had the, the dark, dark, dark green jadeite jade crystals intermixing with the white, you could shine a light through it and they would probably glow kind of green. But a lot of times when you get this smoky texture, you don't see the green glow. And so I think, I think a lot of people believe that if it doesn't glow green, it's not jade. And that's not the case. And this is like a really good example where um, this one I don't have I don't have footage of the pen light, but a lot of times with gray jadeite jade, it's not going to necessarily glow green. It might, but most of the pieces I've seen, they don't. So these pieces of gray jadeite jade that I'm showing are from Mason K. 
Um, Mason K sells a lot of gray jade at jade because it is such an affordable color and it's so fun and it comes in like all these different sizes and styles. Now this one, there is green in it. So you do have the white jade at jade crystals. You have something causing black. I don't know what exactly, but then you have, it's hard to see, but you have these little patches of green in it. And so in those cases, it actually probably is like such dark green jadeite jade that it looks black. And then you might you might have all three where you might have like the white jadeite jade, the graphite and the black jadeite jade that's actually really dark green. I don't know. There's some drama. There's some drama in jade. So let's take a look at the chat and see what everybody's saying. This is totally where I'm at. Like I care more about quality, I think, when it comes to jade, especially like the translucency of the piece. I love it all, like regardless of origin. And and uh, you know what, I should clarify, like I love to know the origin. Like I get really excited about nerding out over like where it's from, but I can't say that I prefer the appearance of one origin of Jade over another because you do have a lot of overlap and both origins in the case of Jade Eye Jade have a lot to offer. Now, of course, you, there's also, we haven't mentioned Siberian Jade Eye Jade, and that's because it's not super prevalent on the US jewelry market as far as like if you walk into a jewelry store, you're probably not, I mean, you might see Siberian Jade Eye Jade, but like you probably won't, <laughs> you know, so you don't come across it as much, but it is really cool. Um, but yeah, like the origin is fun to know. And I think the more jade that I see and the more jade that a lot of people see, the more they admire all different origins. And I think that goes for nephrite jade as well. I do want to know the origin of nephrite jade just because I'm interested. But at the end of the day, like I've seen such good jade from so many different origins that like I, I can't possibly pick a favorite. So, oh yeah, the sleeve. Yeah, I'm really, <gasps> what kind of gemstone should we set into the sleeve on the jade bangle? Woo, I'm very excited about this. Love the feel of jade. Yes. Oh, let's talk about the ping test. Yeah, nephrite does ping. So this is a great topic. The ping test is something that we use in the world of jade to, uh, as an indicator. I'm not saying to test jade because that would not that would not be correct. But let's say you have a jade bangle. If it is translucent and unfractured and natural, so it doesn't have polymer impregnation, then if you hang the bangle from a string and you tap it with a hard object, it's going to resonate this beautiful sound. And that's because Jade Eye Jade has something called sonority. There's this incredible story of Jay Reidinger and Mary Lou Johnson discovering or rediscovering really the Guatemalan jadeite jade deposits in the 1970s recorded in the book Stone of Kings by Gerard Helfrich, which I absolutely recommend to every single person who loves jade. So it's actually, you don't even have to love jade. If you just love a good story, it's a really great story. One of the ways that they identified jade in the field, right? Because by this point, they they were pretty sure there was jade in Guatemala, but it hadn't been officially proven yet. So they walked around with like hammers and they hit jade boulders or boulders in general. And the ones that would sing out that beautiful resonance, that was an indicator that it could possibly be jade. And those were the ones that they had assayed. And that was how they, what, that was one of the many pieces of the, the puzzle in making the great Guatemalan jadeite jade rediscovery in the 1970s. So, and of course it was their love story too. Like they ended up getting married. It's such a beautiful, you guys should read the book. It's a true story. It really happened. She came on my channel. I interviewed her. Can't recommend it enough. Really. It's awesome. What is this? Guatemalan jade. It comes in so many not sexy. <laughs> that are extremely tightly felted. Yes, there's so much variety and I encourage I encourage all of you not to generalize a jade by its origin because you're going to have a pretty wide spectrum of quality in, in every origin, usually. I mean, you have some origins that really just have bad jade, but that's not what we're talking about today. I'm so glad I found that. Yes, I love Mason K. I think Mason K is the best. Oh, I love Demantoid Garnet. You know, I have one. I have a loose Demantoid Garnet that I haven't set yet. It's one of my favorites. Like, I, I just love green gemstones. And the story behind Demantoid Garnet is really amazing, too. I don't know if you guys have looked into the Madagascar deposits, but the owner of the Madagascar Demantoid Garnet Mines actually came on my channel. And um, it's, it's a really amazing, like, uplifting story. Like, if you are questioning, like... What is the economic impact of the gemstone industry? You should go listen to that podcast interview because it it's really uplifting. It's really, really encouraging. Dake 
Siberian is more similar to Burmese than Guatemalan. Yes. In fact, some sellers not knowing, right, um, will accidentally sell Siberian as Burmese, Jade Eye Jade. And so that's why like a lot of sellers might not, it's not that they're not disclosing origin. It's just that you might come across sellers in the Jade world that will say, we don't know where it's from because it's probably from Myanmar, but it could be from Russia. And it's very, very difficult to tell them apart. Yeah. And that is like what Dake's saying here is that they were sold into the Chinese market as Burmese and carved and then sold to the American market. And so but once it passes like through a few hands, like it's very, very difficult to tell where it actually originally came from because the jade industry isn't really, it's not vertically integrated like like some gemstones are where the people who are mining it are the people who are selling it in the jade industry. Like it, that's not really the case. It goes through different hands. The jade sounds like metal when you use the ping test and you, oh, that's right. I didn't finish talking about the ping test. So um, the reason that we use the ping test is because if it's translucent jadeite jade, it might have been treated to appear that way. So they may have bleached it, dyed it, and then polymer impregnated it. And if it is jade that's been treated in that way, which we call B plus C jade, or even just in the case of B jade in general, where it's been impregnated with polymer resin or wax, if you were to tap it, it would not ping. It wouldn't ping, like it wouldn't make that really beautiful sound. So you might think, oh, well, that's a great way to tell if my jade is real. No, 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 no. It's a great way if you have jade that is definitely jadeite jade, right? Because you've tested on a refractometer and it's translucent and it's not fractured it's a great way to tell that it's not treated or treated but the problem with the ping test is if you haven't tested it to know if it's jadeite jade then it would be too easy to confuse with quartz because a quartz bangle that's been dyed to look like jadeite jade will also pass the ping test and quartz is way less valuable way less valuable than jadeite jade so that's kind of the problem with the ping test it's not a bad test it's just that it's one of the many tests that should be performed um when you're gemologically investigating if a stone is jade or not jade clear creek jadeite yeah great question so clear creek jade is a jadeite jade from california it is is not considered gem quality. So if you were to go into a jewelry store, let's say you want a cabochon for a ring, uh, the Clear Creek Jadeite Jade is likely not gonna be an option that that jewelry store carries, though they might have a carver that could make one for you. Um, typically, we kind of separate jade because it is more than a gemstone. It's this really broad category of art and jewelry and like, it had so much usefulness industrially going back thousands of years as like weapons and tools and forks and knives and all kinds of things. But in today's day and age, as a luxury commodity, we usually either look at jade as a jewelry item or as like an artistic, like a carving stone, right? And so I would consider Clear Creek Jade to be more in like the art category in the carving category and less suitable for jewelry because it's usually not going to have high translucency it's not going to be even color and it hasn't been um produced in a large enough volume to like satisfy a market if there really was one clear creek is jadeite i love it but not a sexy jade yeah <laughs> <laughs> yes. And it's confusing because in the state of California, in the USA, there actually are two different types of jade because you have nephrite jade coming out of like Big Sur and Monterey in that area. And then you have the jade eye jade coming out of Clear Creek. And I believe, I believe Alaska has also been known to produce both nephrite jade and jade eye jade. But um, if I'm not mistaken, those operations are alluvial. I don't know that there's any like really dedicated like mining operation for finding jades in Alaska. And to be honest, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure most of the operations in California are also alluvial. But if somebody knows different, please tell me. So, let's take a look at galactic jade. So, this probably isn't the best way to introduce it. Hold on, let me find a better one. There we go. So, this is Guatemalan galactic jadeite jade. And what's really exciting about this is that it has cubic pyrite inclusions. There are other 
um, minerals that can be inclusions in the galactic jade, but it's usually mostly pyrite. Um, another really fun fact about the galactic jade is that the, in Qinghai, China, there's actually what looks like galactic jade. So it's a black jade with pyrite inclusions, but in Qinghai, it's actually a nephrite. And coming out of Guatemala, it's a jadeite jade. So it's just, I don't know, it's just a fun, <laughs> it's a really, really exciting, uh, unique stone in jade that you really don't see a lot. And I'm very, very lucky to have some. A uh, huge shout out to Mine Mountain. You guys know Jesse Stout. He's been on the channel a few times. He sold me the galactic jade from Guatemala. And I have on good authority that Jade Maya sells it too. So um, Jade Maya, I don't know if I have the link in the description, but you can, if you just type it into the search bar, they are owned by Mary Lou Reidinger. She was the one who discovered or rediscovered Guatemalan Jade Jade in the 1970s. So the galactic jade is really cool. I have a great example here of the galactic jade from Guatemala, which is Jade Jade next to a black nephrite jade from California. And this is from a Victorville deposit that no longer exists. And it had magnetite inclusions in the, the jade there. And so the company that produced this, Rare Earth, they actually uh, electroplated the magnetite inclusions with 24 karat gold. So very, very different, obviously. One's jadeite jade with pyrite and one is... Um, like plated it's just it's gold that was plated on by a person and so one's natural and one was man-made not man-made but like man edited i guess and so it's just kind of a, a good side-by-side -side comparison so that if you see jade that's got sparkly gold stuff on it you can kind of tell the difference like you can tell pretty quickly if it's pyrite or if it's been gold plated because obviously they look very different this is another good example of the Victorville nephrite jade. So this is black jade that has the, the magnetite inclusions of the 24 karat gold plating. And then this is kind of a close up where you can really see like the fibers of those magnetite inclusions. Ah, oh, it's just so cool. It's just such a cool piece. You guys are blowing up the chat. I'm loving it. Sorry, guys, I'm reading. I'm still here. I'm still here. Hmm, <laughs> this is a really good question. These are great questions. I, I don't know for sure. Um, my assumption is that because we're closer, I don't know, because we're closer to Guatemala. Uh, but I, I understand the Burmese jade, jade trade to work like this. In Myanmar, they mine the boulders. They go to an auction and they auction off the boulders. The attendees who are invited to bid are usually, from what I understand, from China. And so they're literally spending like a million dollars maybe. I don't know how much. Hundreds of thousands, multi-millions. I'm not sure. On a single boulder. And then they're taking it back to China. And then their carvers are carving it and then selling it like all over the world. So my guess is that access to jadeite jade rough on the American market has to do with the fact that we don't trade directly with Burma. We trade with the Chinese buyers who bought the jade from Burma. Whereas with Guatemala, I mean, like you can just you can kind of call somebody up. <laughs> maybe not maybe that's exaggerated but like we, like i personally know sellers in mexico and uh like mayan mountain his operations based in honduras but they're all very close to guatemala so it's easy i think relatively easy to like import jade from guatemala whereas you can't really do that from burma so maybe that answers your question maybe that wasn't helpful i'm not really sure oh dake to the rescue dake knows this is Chinese jade dealers have monopolized the buyer end and want. The <laughs> okay, Dake has a lot of feelings about this. Dake is really passionate about this. <laughs> I, I think it is true. So uh, just to put it in perspective, the entire jade industry in China alone, one country, is as big or bigger than the entire jewelry industry in the USA. And I think that kind of helps like get the mindset of like, 
the volume of jade being bought and sold in China, it is so culturally important. It is so economically important is a lot different there than it is here in the USA. And so I think that's what Dake is referring to here in his very nice way. <laughs> Let's see what else we he he marketing. <laughs> it's complicated. It's complicated. And to be honest, like this, the whole realm of Jade is very mysterious. It's very dramatic. Um, that's one of the things I love most about the stone is there's always drama. I always say there's always drama in Jade. Jade's a love story. Like it is usually not simple. And it's usually pretty mysterious, but that makes it fun. And I think that that's why we get so excited when there's new information and new research and like new avenues to buy and new sources. Like it's this constant changing thing. And I, it just has us all in a chokehold. I just don't understand it. I just, we love Jade. We're Jade loving people. I'm gonna buy it for one reason. Hope they find the green. <laughs> you guys are so great. I'm loving the chat. We're like, we're really blowing up the chat today. It's awesome. Awesome, awesome. I also wanted to show an example of rough jadeite jade. So this is a piece that my husband has from Yaxtoon. And uh, you can tell he's already cut into it. So he actually, like, do you see the the ear cuff? He, he cut the ear cuff out of this material. So those tiny circles that are missing, those are from where he made ear cuffs. And then the large one is where he made that band that I showed earlier. So uh, just kind of gives you an idea of, like, how granular it is. I personally really, really, really like the look of the Guatemalan black jadeite jade. And it's still it's still pretty affordable right now. And I say that because that could change at any moment. Like I said, like the the value of jade is always changing, but um it's it's pretty good, pretty good prices, especially if you're buying rough. Like I don't really know as much about finished goods, but if you're buying rough, the prices are really fantastic. So this is that ring that my husband had carved out of that rough. And as you can see, shining the light onto it, you really don't get that green glow because it's more of like a true black. So since we're kind of talking about like truly black jades, um, I don't have an example of Edward's black. So, I, but I wanted to talk about it because it's a really, really important part of the greater conversation about black jade. So most black jades are extremely dark green and appear translucent in thin sections. Considered the second most prized Wyoming jade and one of the finest black jades in the world, Edwards black is considered to have no translucence and a very tight felted microstructure. I've also heard that Nevada might have some black jade that's very similar to Wyoming Edwards. So the reason that I don't have any Wyoming Edwards to show, I don't personally own any, is because it's not as common on the market anymore. Like there was a time when I think um, a lot of people were, were selling it and it was maybe a little bit more like active in the jade world. Um, those mines are not producing as much. And so typically, like if you were going to walk into a jewelry store in the US, if they have black nephrite jade, it is, it's probably Australian. Probably. I don't know. I can't say for sure. But um, it's just a little less likely nowadays that it would be Edwards Black. So, um, and to be honest, I mean, we might start seeing more Guatemalan Black Jadeite Jade in jewelry stores. We're not like right now, but that could really change in the next year or so. Um, and then in the same conversation as the Wyoming Black Jade, there's also a black horn blend sold as Cortez Black Jade from Wyoming. It might glow red under a pen light. I don't know that much about it, but it does exist. And there's also an iron rich, hor an iron rich horn blend coming out of Arizona that's sold as Arizona Black Jade. But as a rule, it's not nephrite. And I read a really interesting story where um, someone had taken 14 samples of the Arizona Black Jade back I think in like the 70s and sent them to the, the Smithsonian and they all came back horn blend which is not jade except for one and one actually was nephrite jade so it's an interesting kind of like thought experiment like is there nephrite jade somewhere in Arizona <laughs> is it kind of like mixed in because actinolite and horn blend can kind of form like they form a solid solution series and so I think and so um maybe you have some nephrite mixed in with the horn blend or, or adjacent to it. But as a rule, Arizona black jade, not jade. 
And then, um, yeah, the Cortez Black Jade or Cortez Black Jade uh, from Wyoming. Still a really cool stone, but also not going to be Jade. Oh, and then I also wanted to mention, so I don't have an example of this either, but there's a stone called Karakash Jade, and that is from China. And Karakash Jade is another nephrite considered by some to be the best black jade in the world. And it's produced in the Hertian area of Xinjiang. So... I haven't seen any, and I don't have any in my collection, but it's supposedly the best. And so I would love, I would love to see some. And if anybody has some, uh, will you please post a picture in the Discord <laughs> so that I can see it? Because I would, I would really nerd out and I would be really, really excited about that. Um, what else do I have in here? This is just another shot of those Australian nephrite jade beads. Um, the Australian jade comes from South Australia from a dolomitic deposit of jades near Cowell on the Erie Peninsula. And Cowell jade can actually be olive to dark green to black. I think that it's most known for the black jade because it's like so delicious. It's, I mean, look, at it. it's just so good. Like, I love it. So that's probably why, um, for the most part, if you walk into a jewelry store and see solid black jade and it's not really expensive, it's probably Australian. Probably. But I never know. So, and then I also have this. This has an example. I don't know if you guys can kind of see. There's a black jade stone on my husband's bracelet that he got from Freshwater Jade. And that, well, we've passed it. But, whoops. I do not know how to run a computer. Okay, anyways, the black stone is from Australia. <laughs> That's what I was trying to say. What have I missed? Oh, maybe we should talk about the the omphasite dilemma like a little bit because Guatemalan jadeite jade, a lot of it might actually be principally omphasite. Um, it's it's kind of hard to say. So black jadeite jade, or black fei choy, you can call it either one, is considered by some experts to be iron rich majority omphasite jade or possibly jade with graphite inclusions according to George Harlow's article, Rock and Roll, The Geology of Jade in Lotus Gemology's Jade, A Gemologist's Guide. Understanding the composition of a jade stone is very complicated and due to the complex intermixing of crystals in the polycrystalline aggregate, without destructive testing, it's very difficult, if not impossible, to ascertain which of these similar minerals, jade, omphasite, and cosmochlor, is the principal mineral in the stone. Therefore, sellers are sort of being discouraged from using words like omphasite when selling jadeite jade, because um, it's better to call it like fei choy or use another umbrella term like pyroxene jade. Because using the term omphasite implies, one, that it's not jade, which is not true. Omphasite jade is jade. But it also, two, implies that that we can confirm that a particular specimen is omphasite. And we can't necessarily, like not, not without, not really without x-ray powder diffraction. Unless you have, like, unless you've taken pieces from that same boulder and then you've ground them down to powder and then x-ray powder diffraction tested them. But to be honest, even then... Like, in a single jade stone, even a tiny one, you're going to have a whole bunch of minerals. You might have a whole bunch that are omphasite and a whole bunch that are jadeite, and they're, like, mixed. And so, one of the reasons that we're kind of being discouraged from saying, oh, this is omphasite, is because, like, how do you, how do you know? How do you know how much of it's omphasite and how much of it is jadeite? Because if you can't destroy the specimen because you have to sell it, it's, it's a little hard to tell. So, it is, it seems... Um, it seems likely that that some of the the black jade, like especially coming out of Guatemala, might be majority omphasite, just because a lot of that has been tested. It's been extra powder diffraction tested, and does seem to be high in omphasite. But one of the problems that we have with the term omphasite right now is that, especially in China, like anytime people take black jade and they shine a light through it and it glows green, they call it omphasite and they sell it as omphasite. And it's just kind of creating a little bit more division in the jade world that doesn't need to exist because jadeite jade, omphasite jade, and cosmochlor jade really are all under the same umbrella because they're part of the same solid solution series. They're very, very similar, very similar chemically. And like the properties of the jade stone don't vary very much. Like if you have 
differing amounts of one of those minerals, like principally comprising the stone. So it's a it's a complicated argument. And I, I think I have a link in the description to a video that explains it deeper called, uh, I believe it's called Jade for Gemologists, Fei Choi Explained, and it's with Lotus Gemology, and they explain it a lot better than I did. On some earrings. Oh, Thor's hammer. <gasps> what? I didn't know about this. We need to get Jesse on my channel again. Bought some earrings made of Guatemalan Imperial Green. Yes, love all about it. Jesse gets so much love in the chat, you guys. <laughs> We're all such big fans of Mind Mountain. I just love it. Heard that GIA is. Look at you doing great, doing great. So it's that's not true. Um, and it's it's a technicality. So yes. GIA, the Gemological Institute of America, who offers gem reports on jade in the United States. Well, and I guess other way, like I guess in a whole bunch of places. There's a whole bunch of GIAs, but anyways, um, they have added the term Fei Choi to the comments on a GIA report, which means let's say you have a stone that's jade and you send it to GIA and they send back a report. The title of that report still might say Jadeite Jade or Omphasite Jade or Omphasite Dash Jadeite Jade. But then in the comments, all the Jade reports for Jadeite Jade or, well, the Fate Choice Stones, so principally Jadeite, principally Omphasite, principally Cosmocore, all of those reports are going to have a note in the comments that say Jadeite, Omphasite, and Cosmocore are Fate Choice, something, something. And <laughs> you guys are cracking me up in the chat. Jesse does rock. We love Jesse here. <laughs> Very chill person. <laughs> Jesse's pretty cool. So <laughs> I got distracted. I was like, okay, everybody's getting really excited about Jesse. I love it. I love it. Tell if you guys talk to Jesse, tell him to come on my channel for real, for real. Like just anytime, anything he wants to talk about, any Jade he wants to show, he can always come on my channel. So as for the GIA thing, they are adding Fei Choi to the comments. They are still, from what I understand, going to be using Omphasite in the the gemstone title on their reports. So it it's it's a complicated issue. It's changing all the time. There is disagreement between labs. Uh, I think things will continue to change, but I think we can all rest easy knowing that if we send in a stone and it comes back with a report saying that it's principally jadeite, omphasite, or cosmochlor, it is jade. We don't have to worry about it. We don't have to call it something different. And I, I think it kind of takes a load off that like it doesn't affect the value. It doesn't really affect the stone if your report comes back omphasite jade.